Welcome to Truth in Dentistry with me, Dr. Paul Belzicki, where art and science are combined to restore and maintain healthy teeth and gums for a lifetime. Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Paul Belzicki and this is Truth in Dentistry. I started this channel some four years ago with some 30 educational presentations that were authored in conjunction with the Canadian Dental Association and they're basically geared for dentists. Um, since that time I've garnered some 950 subscribers and I'm thankful for that. But I don't know who are dentists and what proportion is just the general public that are looking for information. So I thought that I'd start adding content and the first presentation will be geared towards those of you that are not dentists. So I can familiarize you with dental terminology and procedures. And that will make viewing the other presentations more understandable. Uh, this case involves the reconstruction, the redesign of a smile for a 70 year old lady who just wants to look nicer. And this seems to be a topic that is of interest to most people that come to me and ask me for improvements in their smile. So um, I hope it's more understandable for you and as they say let's dive in. For this case I will gear this towards the general public, those of you that are not dentists, to try to demystify terminology and procedures. So this is a 70 year old female and healthy, the teeth are relatively healthy. It's just a lifetime of eating, chewing and brushing have taken their toll. You can see here that uh, previous crowns have been placed many, many years ago and they seem somewhat fatter than the natural native teeth. And that's because over a course of a lifetime of chewing and brushing and dietary habits. Enamel can be lost from the facial aspect so they look a little skinnier than they should be. They don't have a more a positive profile as this crown does which was probably put in many decades ago when this tooth had more of a uh, pronounced bulge. Also the incisal edges are chiseled away to a large part. Again just from chewing. 70 years of uh, eating and biting and chewing. And um, she turned around one day and said, I, I think I would like a nicer smile. What can you do for me? Well, we the plan was to place crowns on these teeth. Now, just to identify, these two teeth are the central incisors. They're centrally located. These are the incisor teeth. These are the lateral incisors, and in that they're uh, lateral to the centrals. And then we have the eye teeth, the cuspid teeth, or the fangs, if you will, that uh, <laughs> they're often depicted in vampire movies. So cuspids, lateral incisors, central incisors. And important landmarks to pick up is the, the central midline, which runs... Uh, hopefully right up the center of her face. So there's certain landmarks that have to be maintained when restoring teeth. And I look at this and we have to go through some sort of an analysis. And this is, before I started, what I had planned. This was envisioned in my mind because I've done this so many times that I know where I want to go instantly but I have to plan out how I'm going to get there. And this was the vision in my mind before I even started the case. So I knew I was going to go from here to here. And doing that has to be planned out precisely because if you lose landmarks, if you make teeth too long or too short, or the incisal ledges are in the wrong position, you end up with an unhappy case, with an unhappy patient. So first off, a, uh, what are crowns? Well, I have to take these teeth and I have to mill them. I have to mill them or prepare them to a very precise, specific shape because we're going to put little thimbles on, if you will, 
we're going to put little thimbles, which are called crowns, and they will be cemented on these teeth. And they'll stay there. I have cases of crowns in people's mouths for, th for three, four decades without issue. And preparing these teeth precisely, accurately, respects the soft tissue because the last thing you want to do is over prepare or under prepare, damage the tissue, and then you end up uh, making more problems than you've solved. So this may be a little bit frightening for the layperson to look at, but if you want knowledge and you want to know, this is what you have to look at. So these are the prepared teeth. And what's important is the finish line here. We call this the, the prepared margin. It's where the burr stops. It's where the cutting instrument stops. And we have to make a crown that fits very, very precisely and is adapted to this finish line to prevent the ingress of bacteria or saliva so that the cement does not wash out and recurrent decay is not an issue. So uh, this is a stone model that's taken of the original of the original teeth and I'll sit there and I'll think to myself oh, what shape would I think would be an improvement and over the course of a lifetime she has shortened up her teeth so obviously we want to lengthen them out a little bit because the lateral and central incisors they have to be longer than they are wide here these are about one to one they're square because the teeth tooth material has been worn away. So just playing with a little bit of blue blockout material, we I can fashion what I think would be a shape that would be pleasurable to look at or aesthetically pleasing. So here in this phase, I have prepared these three or four teeth, and I've made this little plastic shell. I've put in some acrylic, and then I fashion in by hand in my office out of acrylic I shape and contour what I think would be aesthetically pleasing and functional I park those in and I give the patient a mirror and I say what do you think I mean I've I've lengthened them out a little bit about a millimeter a millimeter and a half I've made them a little bit more facially prominent uh, because so much of the enamel has been lost what do you think? Well, after three or four hours, they typically will look in the mirror and really not know. And they'll typically say, well, you're the dentist. If you think it's okay, then it's okay by me. And that's how it goes. Trust has to be engendered. And you can't, you can't uh, break that trust. So a lot of effort is taken to assure the patient your teeth are going to look longer to you initially and don't think I'm making you into Bucky Beaver I'm just lengthening them out a little bit subtly but even small changes in the anterior teeth will appear a bit more pronounced if the patient isn't prepared so these are this is a way of explaining to the patient this is my plan for you and then a, another stone model is taken and pour it up. And here you can see the provisional crowns or the temporary crowns I've made. And then I have to address the teeth on the right side. This is all done at one very long lengthy appointment. So I will play with adding uh, acrylic to this side to try to match what I've done on the left side. Those three teeth are prepared. There's a shell which will hold the acrylic and then I take a picture and show the patient this is your new smile these are acrylic provisional crowns so they're very uniform yellow in color this isn't the final color we're just now working to the shape to define to help you define what you think is aesthetically pleasing what I think is aesthetically pleasing and then that model uh, or those teeth are captured in a model and this has to be sent to the laboratory with instructions after the patient has worn the provisionals for a week or two because initially 
I might like it, the patient might like it, but then they go home and a family member may say, it's too short, it's too thick, it's too long, it's always too something. And we work that out in the provisional phase and then when everybody's online, when everybody's agreed and everybody's happy with the shape, then a final impression is taken and sent to the lab to replicate. These are impressions of the prepared teeth that are taken and stone models are generated from that. These are the shapes of the prepared teeth. You can see they're cylindrical in nature because a thimble, a crown, will fit on top and be cemented in. So these have to be contoured in a given fashion to provide resistance form to dislodgement. And there are the crowns that have been made on the stone model. This is returned before being glazed and colored. I want to get the shapes back and try them in, in the mouth against the provisionals to make sure that indeed they have replicated the shape that's, that uh, we've planned for. And then it's returned and it's all dolled up. The glaze is there, the texture is there, very, very lifelike, and the case is cemented in. So this is the fusion of art and science. And treatment must be planned to avoid any unpleasant surprises. You don't want to cement in half a dozen crowns and then somebody complained that the shape is not right. The shape has to be worked out in the provisional phase. Now I have cases such as this that, and this was done some 12, 14 years ago for this case. Patient still comes to me. Everything looks exactly the same. Zirconia or uh, a type of porcelain that's used is color stable. It doesn't change color. Uh, the, the material is robust. It's durable. And I see no reason that she won't go the rest of her life with these crowns. I like making these treatment po totem poles at the end for a patient just to see to recapitulate what's gone on because sometimes the patient forgets where they started. So in this, uh, this is the initial preoperative condition and one has to go through analysis and have a vision of what, of what the end point is and that comes with experience. And then it's working on the case, working on a human being, doing it on a stone model or doing it on a computer. I know computers can do this as well. You still have to replicate this in the mouth on a living being. And that's the difficult part. So working up what the plan is in my mind, producing that, and then telling the patient, you go away and you wear this for a few weeks and get all the complaints, come back to me, let's work them out in the provisional phase. And then it's securing that in an impression and delivering a final result. So I hope that gives the lay person a better understanding of what's involved in placing crowns in the aesthetic zone. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.